Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the third episode of our CSS Grid Tutorials. This time, I'm going to build the notorious Holy Grail layout using a unique feature of CSS Grid, template areas. These grid template areas are super cool. They allow you to create a semantic, which means a meaningful map of your design by giving grid sections a name. In this image, you see the grid for a single quadrant. It contains nine areas, labeled according to their position. Now, in order to place an element within the quadrant, you only have to tell it what its grid area places. This is how intuitive item placement can be. For the Holy Grail layout, we will be using more conventional names such as header, navigation, and so on. First though, let me point out that the Holy Grail is not necessarily better or more effective than other site structures. The name comes from the elusive search to find a good implementation for creating this very specific layout. But now, as you will see in a minute, with CSS Grid, it has become a piece of sweet cake. We will get started on this in just a minute. First, we need to talk about a couple of specific characteristics of this Holy Grail. This layout consists of five layout sections, a header section, a navigation section, a main section, a sidebar and a footer. Another requirement is that these sections always take up enough space to fill the entire full screen, even on large monitors where the content, text or images would not automatically take up that space. So what you are looking at right now is not a holy grail. but this image is, and it is what we will be creating in this tutorial. Let's get started. While opening a fresh new project, you can catch a quick glimpse of the sweet new homepage I created for Coffee Cup using, of course, CSS Grid Builder. As you can see, I am going to create the Holy Grail with the foundation framework. Please note that I'm not using foundation for layout purposes. CSS Grid will totally take care of all of that. But I'm a big fan of all the other goodies that Foundation brings, especially the toggler and other JavaScripts for dropdowns, navigations, galleries, and more. I get started with adding an empty container to the canvas. This is not strictly necessary, but with CSS Grid, I prefer doing it. This gives me the option to design for a screen at a time and easily move it around later. I give it a glass of Holy Grail, duh, and make sure it takes up the full screen on any device by setting the height to a minimum of the full viewport height, the VH unit. That means that the layout can grow if dictated by the content, but it will never be smaller. I also give the background a bit of a color, which makes it easier to see what is happening here. Next, I am creating the five layout sections. This is pretty self-explanatory. Using the layout section class selector, I am defining the white background. The text is added so that I can label the sections later on. The padding and flex layout help to nicely position the text. When the basic setup is ready, I duplicate the layout until all five sections are present. The text is updated so it will be clear which section is which without looking at the code. And for those who will be looking at the code, I'm quickly updating the tags to be more semantic. All simple but necessary preparations to show you how to create the Holy Grail layout with CSS Grid. Now, we're finally ready to get gritty again. The Holy Grail container will serve as the layout parent. Another characteristic of this layout is that on mobile, all sections stack. This makes setting up the grid structure and template areas really simple. But before doing that, I'm adding a support query to my project. This allows me to only design for browsers that support CSS Grid and provide alternative styling for browsers that don't. In the next episode, I will describe the ins and outs of the so-called feature queries. For now, let's move on with setting up our grid areas. To do so, make sure to have the Holy Grail container selected. Then set the display property to grid and launch the grid editor. 
Within that dialog, within the grid editor dialog, I start with making sure that my layout takes up the full available width. I do that by setting a width of one FR on the single column. If you're not sure how the FR unit works, please watch episode two of this video series or visit my guide to CSS Grid on cssgrid.cc slash guide. The first area is called header. I make sure to remove the dot which denotes an unnamed area and type header instead. I also specify a height for this header section. The next area is the navigation. This time I type the name in the pane on the right. We will be making a lot more use of that area definition pane when we are adding more columns to the grid when managing the layout on wider screens. If you're paying close attention, you will see that the order of the grid areas differs from the order of the layout sections on the canvas. The canvas is still visible on the left. This is yet another requirement of the Holy Grail layout. On the HTML, the main section has to come before the navigation. This requirement comes from the common belief that search engines consider content higher up in the DOM tree to be more important. Yet, visually, the navigation needs to be above the main section and that is exactly what these template areas will help me pull off. The other thing that stands out is that each of the sections gets a height in pixels except for the main area. The result of this will be that the pixel based sections get their height allocated first. Then the main section will stretch to take up the remainder of the viewport height. And just to clarify, if there would not be enough room to accommodate for any content placed inside the main section, it would stretch to make enough room and push the sections below it down. When we close the grid editor, the only visible effect is that the height of the layout sections changed. The navigation still sits below the main section. That is because all the sections are still automatically placed on the grid. In order for this nav section to go to the navigation area, it explicitly has to be instructed to do so. Before doing that, I'm quickly going to add a one pix gutter, both for the columns and rows to the grid. This makes it easier to differentiate between the layout sections on the canvas. Now the exciting part. I'm going to give each of the sections an additional class name specific to that section. The grid area name will be applied to that particular selector. Alternatively, you could work with IDs here. I just have a preference for using a class and keeping the ID in my pocket until really needed. So for each section with only the selectors particular to that section active, I specify what grid area the layout section needs to go to. You will see that the items will jump around a bit while doing so. That is caused by the placeholder area name, creating an additional cell and causing the implicit grid algorithm that I talked about in episode two to kick in. But when all is said and done, each of the layout sections will be at its specified place, including the main and navigation sections. Nifty. From this point on, repositioning the items is super easy. It is just a matter of reconfiguring the grid. I'm giving you a taste of it by moving the navigation above the header, applying it to the canvas and voila, the layout section repositions itself. And yep, placing it back works as well. It's simply bulletproof. I am making the demo a bit easier to digest by coloring the different sections the same way the areas are color coded in the grid editor. I'm not a big fan, of this color scheme, but hey, it will make it more intuitive. And again, I'm doing this on the section specific selector only. After updating the font styles a bit, we are ready for the next step, changing our layout for wider screens. Currently, the layout stays the same across the full viewport width, but as we just saw, with all the sections already tied to areas, making layout changes should be fast and easy. First, we move the slider past the first breakpoint, then, Making sure we have the Holy Grail container selected, we launch the grid editor dialog. I am duplicating the existing column so all the grid area names are copied over and give this new column a width of 260 pixels. My intention is to place the aside section 
next to the main section for these medium sized screens. For that, I am defining the main grid area to take up row three and four of the first column. The aside section gets the same rows, but in the second column. I have to make sure to really apply these definitions. Then when closing the dialog, the new grid definitions are applied to the canvas and the new layout is in play. That was easy, right? Let's do it again at the next breakpoint. The same procedure. I duplicate the column and specify a new width. Then I remap the areas, navigation in column one, main in two and aside in three. Now I could even have removed the pixel rows and let these areas just be in the one FR row. The result would have been the exact same. Before moving on to the bonus section of this video, I want to make one more layout change. Let's create some space on the sides of this layout structure. I launch the grid editor and add a 20 pixel column. I don't give any of the cells a name. None of the named sections will therefore take up that space. But if I would add one more grid element, it would try to position itself in one of these small cells due to the automatic positioning algorithm that is part of the CSS grid specification. So be careful with these type of structures. In the end, I decided that I wanted the header and footer to stretch and the space only next to the middle section. That is simply a matter of extending the header and footer areas to those new columns. There it is, the holy grail layout created in a matter of minutes, thanks to CSS Grid and the awesome Grid Builder.